dramatic. But with dreams, that doesn't make any sense. So I was, I'm always trying to figure out, like, what is it about a dream where sometimes I can remember the dream? And sometimes it's so vivid when I wake up. I'm like, holy shit, that was crazy. What a dream. And then I forget it 20 minutes later. Right. What is that? So firstly, I mean, one theory of dreaming is that it's just simply a reconstruction when you wake up. So you have these fragments mm. of activity and what your cortex does when it wakes up is what your cortex is designed to do when you're awake normally, which is try to package everything and make a good story, make logical fit out of the world. That's one theory. I, I don't believe that though. Um, your, your point is a really interesting one. Do I remember my dreams? Um, that doesn't necessarily mean I forget my dreams. And what I mean by that is accessibility versus availability. So if mm. you haven't had that experience where you've woken up, you thought, I was definitely dreaming. I can't quite grab it. You know, it just, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. And then two days later, you're in the shower, you're sort of washing yourself, you see a bottle of shampoo, you see the label, and it just triggers the unlocking of that dream memory. And it sort of comes flooding back or mm. someone says something to you and you think, oh, that was the dream. Yeah. What that tells me as a brain scientist is that the memory is there, it's preserved, it's available. But what happens when most of the time when we wake up is that we lose the IP address to the memory. Oh. So it's present, but it's not consciously accessible. Available, not accessible. If that's true, what it means is that this type of information we know can have non-conscious impacts on our behavior all the time. There's great brain science about this non-conscious memory processing. It's possible that we store every one of our dreams. We just don't consciously have accessibility to it, but nevertheless, it's changing how we behave, how we feel each and every day. No evidence for it. It's a theory I'm still wanting to test, but that's possible too, and it's only that anecdote where I can think, I just don't remember the dream, I've forgotten it. I don't think that may be true. It may still be there. I just need to find the keys to act, sort of access that memory. What's stunning to me is how quickly the dream evaporates, the memory of the dream, in relation to uh, an actual experience. Like if we went outside and we saw some lady walk up to some guy and kick him in the balls, we'd be like, whoa, we would remember that. And that you'd be able to tell your friends, like, yeah, some lady just randomly walked up to some guy and kicked him in the balls. Like, we would remember that. And you would remember it 10 minutes later. You'd remember it an hour. You'd remember it yes next day. You'd, you'd be telling your friends, yeah, she just walked right up to him. I remember it like it was yesterday. Because it was, right? Yeah. But a dream can be 10 minutes ago. And you wake up and, dude, it was King Kong and he was he was swinging from my ceiling and somehow or another they f he fit in the room, but the room got bigger and you, you have these crazy dreams and then 20 minutes later you forget all of it. Like what is happening there? So one, one current explanation is that the chemistry of the brain when you go into dream sleep is radically different. Yeah. So one of the chemicals called noradrenaline in the brain, which downstairs in the body, its sister chemical is called adrenaline, Noradrenaline actually plummets to the lowest levels. It's actually, it's a stress chemical in the brain, or it's one of them, that gets shut off during dream sleep, which is Even if remarkable. you're panicking, like what if you fall off a building? Well, what's interesting is that that chemical is low whilst you're having that dream, but when you wake up from those, and some people often wake up, that's when you have the spike of noradrenaline. So oh. it's still low when you're in dream sleep. But there's another chemical that goes in the opposite direction. It's called acetylcholine. It's the chemical that is actually um, altered in Alzheimer's disease. And these two chemicals will change essentially the input-output direction of information flow into the memory centers of the brain. Centers. That makes sense because people take that as a nootropic. They do. Yeah, yeah. that's actually an alpha brain. Um, when when you take that, it's it's been clinically proven to enhance memory, especially verbal memory and recollection of words and things like that. That's right. So that's happening while you're sleeping. Well, so you're in REM sleep, yeah. But what may be happening, our current models, if you sort of build these neural models to sort of mimic dreaming, it may be that during dreaming, it's principally about the outflow of information to generate dreams. And in fact, the chemical profile is oppositional to input, which is about saving. So it's about sort of pumping out information rather than committing information. And so when you come out of a dream sleep, you still get this sort of lingering after sort of taste of, 
of the chemistry, as it were, in the mm. brain. That means that the dreaming brain is more programmed to be outputting a narrative and an experience rather than actually committing it to memory, which is the opposite direction, if that makes sense. It does make sense. Um, how aware are you of dimethyltryptamine? I'm somewhat aware of it um, scientifically, not 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 personally. Experientially, yeah, yeah. Um, th one of the things about psychedelic experiences with dimethyltryptamine, first of all, it's endogenous. You, your brain produces it, your lungs, your liver produce it. But when you have a DMT experience after it's over, the memory fades very rapidly, and it seems just like a dream in that regard. Where while you, while you're having it, what's bizarre is that you're having it while you're awake. Yeah. And then after you have it within 10 20 minutes it is just like a dream that you can't remember. It's very I I remember like little flashes of experiences that I've had. And there's been a lot of speculation that that's one of the things that you're experiencing while you're in heavy REM sleep and that could be responsible for the crazy visuals that you have that seem so vivid. I mean there there's been times where I've had dreams where I was 100% convinced that I was awake. Yeah. And then something happened, like uh, I, I do this thing sometimes where I'll, and if I do it consciously a lot, I think I saw in one of those wacky movies, like uh, What the Bleep Do Me Know, I think I saw it in that, where you walk up to a door, as you're walking through the door, you knock on the side of the door and go, am I awake? Nope, I'm not awake. Or am I asleep, rather? Yeah. No, I'm not asleep. Um, cause I'm knocking on the door. Well, I did that and my hand was just like going right through the wall and I went, <laughs> Oh, I'm fucking <laughs> sleeping. Uh, and then I woke up and I was like, Whoa. but the feeling that I had while I was in that dream, it was so vivid. I mean, everything seems so real. Like what could possibly be causing me to construct this artificial reality in my mind that at the moment at least was indistinguishable from the reality that I experience right now. And I'm assuming because I just knocked on this table that I'm awake. <laughs> yeah, I really hope I'm not just a, a, yeah, a fictive character in your dreams. Well, maybe we're sharing a dream. Uh, um, yeah, very Inception-like. Uh, Is that possible? Uh, mm -hmm. Not based on the science so far. Um, mm. But I, I think, you know, what you're speaking about there really is almost why would, why would Mother Nature create this thing called the dream experience? You know, yeah. what would be the function of essentially every night going into what sums up to be about two total hours of virtual reality experience and testing. One possibility which is deeply unsatisfying is that it's just a byproduct, it's just epiphenomenal, that when your brain goes into this thing called REM sleep and all of the different patterns of brain activity that we described, an offshoot is this thing that we call dreaming. In the same way that a light bulb, the reason that we construct the apparatus that's a light bulb is to produce light. But when you produce light in that way, you also produce heat. It was never the function of the light bulb. It's just what happens when you produce light in that ah. way. Maybe dreaming is just sort of the heat of REM sleep. And REM sleep serves lots of other functions. But wow, that doesn't feel to me right, though. Mm, why? Well, firstly, I think it's probably additionally metabolically demanding to have dreams in addition to this thing called REM sleep. And whenever Mother Nature burns calories, it's usually for a reason, because mm. they're so precious. Mm. That's a good point. That makes sense, too. Yeah.